Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy. I'm Tim Moore, the Senior Evangelist of Lamb and Lion Ministries, and I'm joined again today by Nathan Jones, our Internet Evangelist, and David Bowen, our Teaching Evangelist. You know, last week we started a conversation about the Great Reset with Brandon Holthaus, our special guest. Yeah. Brandon, thank you for joining us for yet another week. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, we just continue rolling, but That's today right. we want to move into the signs of the times okay. that are converging all around us. So the Great Reset is one facet of the prophetic signs that we can see transpiring right sure. before our eyes. But here at Lamb and Lion Ministries, we've come up with really six categories of signs to describe or at least uh, begin to understand all the things that are happening. Nathan, remind us what those six categories sure are. Sure thing. And uh, well, it starts with the signs of nature, which we could talk forever about. Yeah. It moves on to the signs of society, then the spiritual signs, both positive and negative. We have the sign of world politics, which the Great Reset just drops right in there. Yeah. The signs of technology, which Dave yeah. and I are big fans yeah. of. And then, of course, the super sign, the sign of Israel. So yeah. we could cover each of these and say yeah. Has know, there a been... few minutes at a time. And, and the, But the big question, and, and this is something we've been hearing over the last 10 years, is we've been seeing these signs in these different categories, but now the, all six categories are firing all at once. So the Lead-off question then would be, are you seeing in your ministry a convergence of all the signs pointing to the soon return of Jesus Yeah, Christ? I think anyone that's in tune with the prophetic scenario is saying the same thing. And that's where I think the Holy Spirit's convicting all of us in the prophecy world that they're converging all the signs, whether it's Israel or whatever, the World Economic mm -hmm. Forum, all of it is converging at the same time and coming to a head. And we know where that head goes to, the tribulation. We have never seen something like this. There's been, you know, throughout church history, parts, well, here you had this, you had that, but you didn't have all the parts. Correct. And now every piece of the pie is activated. And I think that's a, a major sign to all of us in the prophecy world, something's going on. Well, I think sometimes people fall into the trap of thinking, just as uh, in the days when Peter was talking about scoffers will come with their scoffing and their mm -hmm. mocking, and people say, oh, come on, it's always been this way. Yeah. Well, there have always been indications of evil and a trend toward uh, wickedness, but not like we've seen manifest in recent years. Just think 20 years ago, did any of us even think that there would be the transgenderism of today? Right. That wasn't on the radar. So there's been a, a complete giving over to debauchery, not just tolerating certain lifestyles, but now celebrating and demanding that you celebrate as well. Yeah. That has never been seen in living memory. And so we've returned to the paganism of the past. And yes, these signs are all multiplying and yet people can get blasé. In other right. words, think, ah, it's always been this way. No, it hasn't. What's interesting too, on my computer, I keep a Webster's Dictionary from 1950 and I keep one from 1910. And I look up the word tolerance mm. and you see how the dictionary has yeah. even changed what it means. Oh. Tolerance used to be we could disagree and be fine. Well, the, the meaning of woman is no longer the same <laughs> as it was just a Marriage. few months ago. Yeah. Marriage. We're yeah. seeing how words, even the meaning of words yeah. even change and our culture changes with it. Well, Brandon, let's tackle the first one and that's the sign of nature. People are looking around the world. They're seeing all these crazy weather patterns happening more frequently and more intensely, just yeah. as Jesus said in Matthew yeah. 24 and Luke 21. And they're then saying, well, it's not God calling us to repentance. They're reinterpreting it as climate change, yes. or global warming or something like that. Do you believe that this is becoming a Babylon-like religion, this worship of the creation rather than the creator, as 2 Peter 3, which you just quoted, yeah, says? Absolutely, because that's what happens. Romans 1 talks about that. But ancient paganism was the worship of creation, and that's what we're seeing. Well, we got to save Mother Earth or, or whatever. And now, instead of, like you just said, interpreting the, the, the uh, this is the word, unprecedented, unprecedented weather patterns, and they're saying, well, that's because of our carbon emissions out of our SUVs. And it's no, that is a biblical sign throughout the whole Bible that God is trying to warn people something's coming. And he would do it through weather patterns many times, lack of rain or whatnot, mm. storms, earthquakes, you name it. The earthquakes, if you look at the earthquakes, earthquakes are off the chart. Every Sunday I show the, uh, a prophecy update on how many earthquakes over 5.0 happened this week, and it just keeps getting larger and larger, just like the Lord said. And that's not counting the ones on the ocean. Yeah, right. All the so ones happening in the ocean, we don't. Well, you have an earthquake there. We don't. We don't know about that. 
animals, we talk about nature, how would you go about this? Um, I know in the revelation, the, in the tribulation, half the population won't survive that yeah. seven years. It's gonna be mass death. We're seeing birds fall out of the sky. We're seeing thousands of fish come up on the shore dead. We're seeing cows fall over in the fields. The mass death of animals. Is that a preamble for what's gonna happen in the revelation to humans? I, th I think so. And that's the graciousness of God to show humanity, look, here's a, a, a small microcosm mm -hmm. of what it's gonna look like in the, the tribulation. And I think that's that's God's grace saying, wake up. Mm -hmm. Something is about to happen where most of the animals will be destroyed by the judgments of the tribulation. So absolutely, it's a sign. Yeah. Wake up. That's the uh, Lord's message to one of the churches in Revelation, that they mm -hmm. need to wake up. And certainly, we should be waked up today. Uh, I remember serving in the legislature and getting a magazine called Governing Magazine. And several years ago, their cover story was about how governments around the world are touting the need for resilience in the face of ever more frequent and damaging natural disasters. Mm -hmm. And I thought those editors had no idea that they were proclaiming the fulfillment of Bible yeah. prophecy in the natural realm. And yet we see it all the time. Let's move to society. We could spend sure. many hours. Uh, yeah, and our, I'm sure our viewers sure. are very familiar yeah. with all the changes I've already mentioned. Who would have dreamed 20 years ago that transgenderism would be yeah. the thing, that all these corporations would be embracing, even to their own demise, a woke ideology mm. and a progressive, immoral mentality that would drive away their own customers. And yet here we are. Yeah. And what we're seeing from Bible prophecy is the formation of the Whore of Babylon. And as we know that the book of Revelation talks about this three-legged stool of Babylon, which being the headquarters of the Antichrist, but it includes an economic leg, it includes a political leg, and a religious leg. Mm -hmm. And what's happening, I, really what wokeism is, we know it's Marxism, but in the bigger scheme of things, a religion, an ancient religion, is being perpetrated on humanity, and it's straight from Babylon, the mother of harlots. And that's why you see in America the attack on the Judeo-Christian ethic from the whore. And whether you use the term wokeism or progressivism, it is a different religion. It is a pagan religion. What's interesting is how the first half of the tribulation, this mystery Babylon religion is kumbaya, link yeah. hands, wokeism is the dominant religion. But then the Antichrist and the false prophets step in, yes, right. kill her, yes. and then set up open Satan worship. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. what's interesting we're seeing more and more is Satan camps. We're seeing Satan after school clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, Satanism seems to be on the rise in the country. Do you think then that our society is openly embracing Satan willingly or unconsciously? Huh, I think it's both. Because I think people do know that Satanism is attractive. And what they're saying is, well, we don't really believe in a person of Satan. It's just a concept or a principle and basically the principle is this, do what makes you feel good. That's the tenet of Satanism. Now think about this, Target just partnered with a Satanist to design right, right. their clothing for Pride Month, which included guillotines for those who like us who are quote unquote homophobic yeah. and, and making all kinds of clothes for cross-dressing. That's unprecedented to watch Target partner with a Satanist and think that's acceptable. So it, it, it's, it's something we've never seen. So then the unconscious part is, well, do whatever makes you feel good. And that's basically how people are operating. I, saw, I, I searched, be careful when you do this, for a demonstration of reveling in sin. And I was uh, oh. able to find a t-shirt that's being sold, uh, <laughs> touted as made in the USA. We'll actually put it on the screen. And it talks about giving oneself over to death and to visions of wow. death and destruction and destroying the image of God of man as formed in the, in the fashion of God. Right. We're obviously blending over into the spiritual signs, yeah. even as we talk about the society signs, because there's so much intertwining. And yet that is the, the crux of why our society is falling into these, these pits of satanic worship and really of despair. The number of young people who have been given over to discouragement, depression, and even despair leading to suicide right. attempts among young girls is unprecedented, as you said, right. Brandon. It. And it has a spiritual component, but it's being manifest in our very society. And what's interesting is we don't even try to hide it. Yeah. No. Years ago, Courage. you know, you would do something, it'd be kind of sneaky, and then you wouldn't see it. Now it's out in the open and everybody's accepting it. You look at, you mentioned, you know, the European Union, when you go over there mm -hmm. and you talk about Babylon. 
their permanent building is built after the Tower of yeah, Babel. I know. Isn't that crazy? It's designed after it, the Tower of the Babel. The woman look, riding the beast yeah, is, is right. on a statue. The, the bull, all over yeah, you the look place. at it and go, okay, we're publicly making this and we're doing this, and we yeah. all go, oh, that's that's okay. Okay, so now we've moved into category four, world politics. Yeah. We before, skipped up, we did before spiritual. We move on, though, but, even <laughs> the last episode, we discussed how the next shoe to drop will likely be pedophilia. Yeah. And so a sign of society that that begets from a spiritual emptiness, and so we're pursuing child autonomy to the point that pedophilia will yeah. be the next thing the that's open. embraced. Out yeah. in the open. Well, there are positive spirits. So let's go back to category three before okay. we go to world <laughs> politics. I know that's where we love, and I know that's your wheelhouse. Okay. But there are positive spiritual signs in the Bible. Could you give us a little encouragement about what's positively going on in the church today? Well, what's happening is the great separation is happening. And what I talk about it is a revealing that God is doing about the church. Mm. He is now taking the veil off of the church, and we're now realizing who is part of the remnant church and who is not. Mm. And why is that important? It's important for us to know if we're going into battle, I got to know who I can trust in the foxhole with me. Amen. And, and we're going into a major battle, obviously. The Lord still has us here. I got to know who's on my side. And what I'm starting to realize is I'm starting to know the names of the remnant by, you know, by personal names because there's not much of us left. There seems to be a group out there that gets it, understands it, and is fighting, but the rest of Christendom, they're checked out. I would submit that uh, even in the days of Elijah, right after the major victory there at Mount Carmel over the prophets of Baal, he had a, a little time of, of great uh, sadness yeah. and sorrow when he thought, I'm the only one left. He kind of had right. a pity party. And the Lord said, no, there are 7,000. That's right. I think it's instructive. Elijah did not know who those 7,000 were. Mm -hmm. and so we will not always know. Yeah, I think there is a great separation. The Lord knows. And we just need to be encouraged yeah. that there are faithful Christians. Yes, there's going to be a great winnowing even in this season. Uh, one of our speakers over at our conference said, you know, we go to China and the pastors there will tell you there are no liberal Christians here. <laughs> who would want to be a liberal Christian and put up with the persecution you have to endure? So the yeah. only people who are, are truly professing Christians, they are serious about their faith. Mm -hmm. This is true in many parts of the world. I think it's going to grow increasingly true here. Yeah. But let's face it, when we have a conference, when you go to conferences, people come from a number of churches seeking to find fellowship yes. with like-minded believers. Right. And we can just know that the Lord has preserved for himself Amen. a remnant. Amen. Brandon, you have a resource on your website that I, I think our people would love to know about because sure. we get questions all the yeah. time. I live in this town <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. do you know a church that is a Bible-believing, Bible prophecy-loving church? Yeah. Tell us about that resource. Yeah, so what I did, because I wanted the remnant to connect, is we created a church tracker for remnant churches that, that have, you know, mm -hmm. a healthy, well-balanced theology. And the address? Yes, go to rockharvardchurch.net on our, our website and go to resources, and there it is right there. And you can see a map of the United States, and we've identified remnant churches for people. We've actually called the pastors. We've talked to them and to make sure they're pro-Israel, dispensational, the whole nine yards yeah. to see where they're at. And we whittled it down to about 600. But what that allows people to do is find a safe church to go to. They might have to drive two or three hours, but it is a remnant church. And it's been wonderful to connect remnant believers to these remnant pastors, just like this guy right here. Yeah, I, I can give a personal testimony for that because I do pastor a church in Phoenix, Arizona, Standing Stones Community Church. And when people come to church, I like to greet them afterwards and how did you hear about the church? And I can't tell you almost every week, <laughs> I didn't realize how important this, this tool was. Almost every week someone comes in and says, well, I got it through Rock Harbor Church and going there and looking for a remnant church. And the people who have joined our church are solid yeah. uh, Bible-believing, prophecy-believing uh, uh, believers. And they do travel a distance, and, and they are rock solid. Amen. Amen. They they're have Rock Harbor solid. Yes, they're <laughs> yeah. right. The very fact that this television show is being broadcast not only through network media and through uh, cable television and satellite television, but also through the Internet is yet another facet of how uh, the Lord is blessing in this day and age yeah. the ability to get this message out. You know, 200 years ago, it would have been unusual for any of us individually to be able to reach thousands upon thousands, if not millions of people potentially, through yeah. a, a mechanism like the Internet. I know there's many evil things on the Internet and through technology, but praise the Lord, we're leveraging it and using it for good. Amen.
Hello, my name is Nathan Jones, Internet Evangelist here at Lamb and Lion Ministries. We're using the internet to proclaim the soon return of Jesus Christ to the billions of people who are connected online now and after the rapture. I would like to invite you to come and check out our website at ChristinProphecy.org. Watch whole episodes of Christ in Prophecy and our short prophetic perspectives and the Inbox series for in-depth teaching about end time events. Read from the library of articles on our website and blog covering all aspects of God's prophetic word. Subscribe to our free e-newsletter to receive the Lamplighter magazine, as well as to our social media to stay up to date on current events as they relate to Bible prophecy. Equip yourself to share the good news with others using materials from our online store. I invite you to come and visit ChristinProphecy.org today. Let's jump to side number five. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the technologies today. And of course, these can't live in their own categories. They all interact. Yeah, they all, so tell us some of the categories of, sci of technology that, that Tim is telling us about that is helping us spread the gospel, but it's also is bringing in the Antichrist empire. Yeah, well, you have the, the internet, obviously can be used for good or bad, right. but the internet has been very successful in getting our message out. And I think this is what God is doing. He's protecting that message because he wants that message to get out from you guys, from, from him and from myself and anyone else involved. So it's being used. So the platforms are being used. Okay, you have that aspect. The other aspect then on the negative side is the technology that they're developing, the AI is eventually going to create a national identity or a mm. global identity in order to survey uh, surveillance and track people around the world. And so that's the negative aspect, but of course the Bible predicts that. Interesting thing too about Revelation 13 about technology. We might have a glimpse of technology with the idol that the Antichrist sets up because this thing has the ability to kill you if you do not bow a knee to it. And John uses an interesting word. He says, the way the Greek is formed, he says, it looks like it's alive, but he doesn't use the Greek word zoe, which means biological life. He says, it looks alive, but he's basically saying it's not. And maybe John is describing a, a AI robot technology. Do you know, during the month of June, even as we record this episode, during the month of June 2023, a gathering of a Protestant Christians in Germany sat at a worship service while an AI preacher actually presented the sermon and other <laughs> AI assistants came to have a role in the sermon. So it was on a screen and it was all computer generated and it oh, delivered yeah. a sermon. And people said, you know, it was actually, it wasn't bad. There, there was no heart in it. There was no life. It was very flat and monotone. Eventually, they'll get better at even producing sure. what appears to be life. But they said, you know, it wasn't too bad. And I'm sure the young people loved it. And I thought, this is awful. You went to a worship service to listen to a computer mm -hmm. preach to you? And the sermon was completely made up through something like chat GPT. I mean, it was, yeah. it was all AI generated. Yes. And yet, that's what these people went and sat under. Unbelievable. And technology is moving so fast. I remember getting my master's degree in seminary. We didn't have the internet. Right. It wasn't that <laughs> right. long ago. <laughs> right. You had so, to go to a library? We, we I did. used a typewriter at Bible college. It was, it was the email possible, but there was no internet. You know, it's like yeah. how quickly and how fast things are moving in technology. You can't keep up with it. Yeah. All right, so let's get to the last sign, lest we do run out of time, and that being the signs of Israel. All oh, of wow. us have yes. been to Israel, yeah. love to take people to Israel to see with their eyes what the Lord is doing in yeah. our own day and age. And let's face it, Israel just celebrated its 75th anniversary mm -hmm. as an independent modern state. Yep. Uh, within my lifetime, at least, uh, Israel regained its ancient capital of Jerusalem, the old city. And so what are the signs of Israel that are just multiplying before our eyes? And why is it important? Why is it called the super sign? Well, it's the time clock, basically. Everything that you see set up for the tribulation requires Israel to be a nation. Mm -hmm. It requires them to have control of the old city. It requires them to have the control of the mountains of Israel, especially for Ezekiel uh, 38 and 39. So when you see them, they have control of their mountains. They have control of the old city. Eventually, they're going to get control of the Temple Mount because mm -hmm. we know a tribulation temple will be built. So when you see Israel set in place, that means... That, that what is necessary for the tribulation for Israel is ready to go down. 
So, and then the interesting thing, if you watch Israeli politics, there's a divide in Israel right now. Mm -hmm. The divide between the secular left and then you, the conservative, you know, more Hasidic Orthodox, okay? But what's happening is the formation of who will do the deal with the Antichrist is starting to emerge yes. even in the split in Israel. I mean, they're having civil war, so to speak, in Tel Aviv when they have these two groups fighting with each other. Daniel says the many will make a deal, not all of Israel, but the many will make a deal with him. And I think politically what's happening in Israel is that split is going to continue to grow and there, there emerges the side that will do the deal with the Antichrist. I think it's important too to understand because you've talked about, you know, when does this happen? And people have been saying, well, Christ is going to return. I've been hearing this for 50 years, you know. Yeah. Is, is it going to happen? Well, what people don't understand is that the Bible tells us that three things have to happen before Matthew 24 really comes to effect. Israel has to be a nation. Yeah. Check, 1948. Yeah. Jerusalem has to be the capital. Check, yeah. 1967, yeah. basically. But the Jews had to be back. God calls the Jews back into the homeland. Right. And it, it, this last decade, there are more Jews now in Israel than out of Israel, the Seven first million. time since A.D. 70. Mm -hmm. So really, when you talk about everything else coming together, this is the first generation where all three of those boxes are checked. Prior generations could not say that, whether it be technology or anything else. Israel was the key, and as long as the Jews were outside the land, God's not going to do anything. That's but when right. He brings them back, He calls them back. And we've been there, and you talk yes. to people, why'd you come back? I don't know. I just felt like God was calling me here. Mm -hmm. That's the third checkbox. And the reason that this could have happened at any point in the last 2,000 years is God's timetable could have accelerated 1,000 yes. years ago, yes. 1,500 years ago. He is not limited by what our perception right. is. We learned, even as Mondo Gonzalez shared, some of the writings of great theologians and Christian uh, Zionist expectors of Israel's reestablishment 150 years ago, and they said, well, I don't understand how this is going to come to yes. pass. As yeah. I would put it, uh, their, their image and mentality was, well, the Jews are very happy in places like Germany and Poland and Russia, but somehow the Lord is going to motivate the Jews to want to go back to their ancient homeland because that's what it says in Scripture. I don't understand how that will happen, but I believe it. And that's really the key even as people open Revelation. Well, I don't understand it. The key to understanding it is to believe it. If you believe it, and you read and heed, as it says, mm -hmm. two different times, then you will begin to understand. Mm -hmm. But the key is, do you believe the Word of God? Do you believe that His promises are yes and amen, yeah. even if you can't yet understand? We're gaining understanding all yes. the time, yeah. even more than our forebears in faith. Well, interesting enough that you said that. I, I just had Olivier Melnick speak at my church, and he talks about Jewish anti-Semitism in America. Okay. What we have seen is the return to, to back to Zion that started in the late 1800s has been fueled by anti-Semitism mm -hmm. in Europe. And now we have almost half the Jewish population here in America. Well, if the, if the Lord brought them out of Europe from, because of anti-Semitism, what should we expect here? Is it going to be the same thing? Well, according to the Anti-Defamation League and Olivier Melnick, anti-Semitism in America has went up 40%. Mm -hmm. So. It's making the Jews uncomfortable living here. And eventually it will motivate them to go Bingo. back to Israel. And that's the result of the Gog Magog War. It, it, the yes. world knows there's a God. Yes. And all, not just some, all the yes. Jews return to Israel. Do you see, Brandon, as we're talking about convergence of signs, and mm -hmm. there's all coming together, that we are seeing the church kind of passing the torch to Israel. Oh. As Israel becomes more prominent, eventually they will get the heart that we read in Ezekiel 38 and 39 for God, yet not his son. It's kind of an indicator that the rapture's got to happen soon, right? Because mm -hmm. the Lord will, yeah. is looking like He's starting to move His presence from the church to Israel. Interesting you say that because the conversion of Jewish believers in the last 20 years has been more than the last 2,000 years. Wow. And yet the Gentiles seem to not respond to the gospel anymore, especially the younger generations. I mean, the younger generations are down hovering around about 2% that mm -hmm. claim to be Christian. It's that bad. So I think you're seeing the, the fullness of the Gentiles, as ta Paul talked mm -hmm. about, coming to an end and the, the program getting picked up, and we're in this overlap period. That's why we're seeing so many Messianic believers say, Yeshua is Messiah. So part of the convergence, that's a, an excellent point. Part of the convergence is the shifting. You know, I talk about Ezekiel's vision of the glory of the Lord, the Shekinah glory, leaving the temple. And, and we can see that almost fulfilled in the way that he left the Jewish people and only a very small 
fraction of them yeah. came to faith over the last 2,000 years. But Ezekiel also saw the Shekinah glory of the Lord returning to the temple yes. to reside there on Mount Zion. And so sure enough, there has been a great upsurge of Jewish faith and Messianic believers. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And part of our hope is that even Jews watching today will realize we serve and worship a Jewish Messiah, Amen. Yeshua, Jesus Christ. So we, we all like to think there'll be a great awakening in the West. I think most of us would agree no. that is unlikely given no. the trajectory and trends right. in our own society. But yet the Spirit of God is at work. And until Jesus Christ returns, there will be people who respond in faith to the message of the gospel. Amen. And I think that's the, our job until we're raptured home, uh, to get the gospel out, sh shine the light on the evil, and disciple, and do what our Father told us to do. Do His business and occupy until He comes. Amen. And folks, you know what? That's not just our job at this table. That's really your job. The Great Commission is to go and make disciples, to tell people about the gospel of Jesus Christ, giving your own personal testimony, not just ours. And so we would encourage you to be a part of this great mission which is to tell people about Jesus Christ until He returns. We look forward to that glorious day, but until He does, even as we say Maranatha, we say come and be a part of the great church of Jesus Christ. Godspeed. For over 42 years, Lamb & Lion Ministries has proclaimed the soon return of Jesus Christ to as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. Our entire staff is dedicated to that gospel-centered message which we get out through the Christ in Prophecy television program, our bi-monthly magazine, The Lamplighter, a huge library of books, pamphlets, DVDs, and of course, our dynamic and interactive website. We point new generations and new audiences to our blessed hope. And I hope that you've found it to be encouraging to you because we can't do it alone. This faith-based ministry is supported by thousands of Prophecy partners, which enable our outreach through their faithful prayer and financial support. Prophecy Partners commit to contributing $25 a month, less than a dollar a day. And in return, they receive a print edition of our Lamplighter magazine and updates on the impact this ministry is having around the world. If you've been blessed by Lamb & Lion Ministries, join with us, partner to share the exciting message that Jesus is coming soon. Godspeed. Christ in Prophecy is made possible through the faithful and generous support of viewers like you. Please consider making a donation to Lamb and Lion Ministries so that we can continue broadcasting the message of Jesus' soon return. Thank you and God bless you.